This is a 1957 wheel horse, model RJ35. The RJ means right away junior, and the 35 means a three and a half horsepower engine. This is not the original engine, because this is a Kohler K91, which is a four horsepower. These tractors have a variable speed belt drive. This is before they made the three speed transmissions, which came out in 1958. The 1956 wheel horse would be quite similar, although the wheels were painted black in 56. On these Kohler engines, when you start them cold, I like to turn the throttle all the way down and then turn it up slowly until you see the throttle linkage reach the full open position at the carburetor. Usually that's about halfway on the throttle lever. Then you want to have the choke turned on all the way and you pull the cord. So you want to be ready to take the choke off right away as soon as it starts and let it run at half choke for a little bit to get warmed up. Yeah, okay, it does smoke a little bit, but I'm gonna ignore that part. Something worth mentioning about these early tractors is that brakes were an option. This particular tractor don't have brakes on it. And with this type of a drive system, that allows you to freewheel downhill, forward or backward. The optional brake system was made so it bolts on the outside and would just work on the left wheel. Here I'm trying to get it to go in reverse, but the drive paws in the rear hubs are a little bit sticky, so they're not working properly. I'll have to fix that later. The main part of this system is this variable speed belt pulley. It's controlled by this lever on the side. When the lever's in the rearmost hole, that's neutral because it moves the pulley down far enough to disengage the belt. Move it to the second hole, and that's the slow speed. Each hole you move to above that gets faster just because it's changing the pitch of the belt pulley. If you watch here you can see the belts move when I change speeds. One belt moves down deeper in the groove while the other belt moves outward in the groove. Here you can see it come slowly to a stop because it freewheels and don't have brakes. I'd like to show this working without the belt guard in place, 
but the belt guard don't just cover the belts it also has this piece on the bottom which cradles the belt and allows it to not touch the pulley when it's in neutral without this guard on there the belt would not disengage properly so I came up with this other plan I have the rear of the tractor on blocks so the wheels can turn safely and over here I made a belt guard without the guard so this piece of metal here duplicates the part that's on the bottom of the belt guard and that's gonna hold the belt in place for me just like the belt guard would see this metal strap is supporting the belt so when the upper pulley moves down the belt gets pushed away from the lower pulley and that's what allows it to release as I move the lever forward you can see that rod on the bottom is pulling the arm forward which forces the variable speed pulley away from the engine pulley that causes the center sheave of the variable speed pulley to shift sideways changing the effective pulley diameter which changes the drive ratio the spring that you see at the bottom is an important part of this mechanism because it keeps a fairly consistent tension on the belts throughout the drive range to get reversed on these tractors you pull the lever all the way back that lowers the variable speed pulley until it contacts this brass ring that's behind the drive pulley on the engine and that's what turns the pulley in the opposite direction it's a fairly crude system but they didn't expect you to be going in reverse very much Well, look at that. I got it in neutral, which is the rearmost hole, but the belt's still touching the pulley enough to get it to move forward. So I'm going to readjust that. To adjust it, I'm going to take out the front part of this bar and screw it out two turns so it's a little bit longer then when I'm in this neutral position hole the pulley will be slightly lower now in neutral I can turn the engine pulley and the belt don't grab so that's good And if you move it to the first hole, it appears to be fully engaged and not slipping, so that's good. Notice the right wheel's not turning. And that's because the drive paws in the hub are a little sticky. If they were working properly, the drive paws would pop out when the axle started turning and the wheel would move. Here's another look at the way the pulley moves when it changes speeds.
You might have noticed that this pulley looks freshly painted, and that's because I just made it. This is a prototype. I plan on maybe selling some on my website and on eBay. There's four main parts to this pulley set. Here's a picture of the first part partially done. And here's a picture of the center shaft sitting on that partially done part. So this here is the rear section finished and the center shaft has been pressed into place. The center shaft has a woodruff key in it so that this center section can slide on the shaft and not rotate. And then the top section is pressed onto the shaft. The center section is trapped in between but can slide back and forth. They all get new needle bearings. That same part number is still available. All three parts that the belt rides on are made of cast iron and the center shaft is made of steel. So this will be all identical to the original. On this original pulley set you can see that they used a set screw and it goes into both parts to lock them together even though it's a press fit. I don't know if you have problems without doing that but it's on all the ones I've ever seen so they must have thought it was necessary. I'll be doing that to the ones that I sell just to make them like the originals. I'll be running this prototype for a while just to make sure it works right. Alright, that's it.